On first down, the handoff to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50 yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, INDY. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with his second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Kenny Moore gets to Deshaun Watson. That's a sack for Kenny Moore. Kenny has a pick and now a sack in the game. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. Welcome back, guys, to another edition of the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your co-host, as always, and joining me, as always, Derek Larger. And Derek, the Colts just made another move on their defensive side. Uh, Another move off the heels of the Xavier Rhodes signing, signed another corner. Uh, 29-year-old TJ Carey. Um, And Carey originally was a seventh-round pick of the Oakland Raiders in 2014. Most recently played with the Browns, um, where he started six games last year. Uh, last year, he was a guy that uh, he had 52 tackles. He had a sack, a forced fumble, an interception. Uh, and then the Colts get carry on a one-year deal there, signing for about the vet, vet minimum there. Um, one thing, Derek, that stands out to me about this signing, I think overall, I think it's more of a depth signing um, yeah. as far as your defensive backs go. <laughs> I mean, you signed Xavier Rhodes, like I mentioned. Um, and then you obviously have Rock Yassin and then some other guys in there that you feel decent about. Uh, so to me, it's just more of creating more depth, especially at the defensive back position. We know very well um, you need a lot of good quality guys there to step in and play because um, we know injuries happen in the NFL. It mm-hmm. seems like a lot of injuries happen in the cornerback position. We saw that last year. Pierre Desir missed some time. Rocky Asin, I think, was banged up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the Colts' corners were injured last year, and now that the Colts – Seems like the Colts are just trying to add depth there, and that's one thing that Chris Ballard <clears throat> has really talked about. Um, one thing that stands out before I kind of get your thoughts on this signing, Derek. So I know a lot of people aren't big fans of pro football focus, uh, but one one thing that was really notable to me about Kerry, so he was he was their 145th best cornerback. So, you know, spot starter type of guy, not one of the top corners in the league by any means. But one thing that he posted was an 82.4 run defense grade. And that's just very, very good for corners. He's six foot tall, over 200 pounds. Uh, And it seems like he kind of fits that mold of what Chris Ballard and this Colts defense is asking out of their corners. You know, guys that are are willing to go up and make tackles. uh, And that's what they need. And that's what Mm -hmm. the scheme really needs. Um, So it seems like it makes a lot of sense from that standpoint. Already mentioned six foot, 204. That's about the kind of some of the guys that Ballard has signed. That's about the mold, over six feet tall, kind of bigger corners. Um, what are your overall, you know, we don't know a lot about this guy. He's kind of floated around the league a little bit. Right. What are your overall impressions of, of Kerry here, getting him on a one-year deal? Yeah, I mean, this move doesn't just make sense. It makes perfect sense. I mean, y- y- just look at the cornerback room right now for Indianapolis. Just look at it. You have Xavier Rhodes. His biggest strength is getting physical at the line of scrimmage and breaking when the run game is involved or there's short screens. He's a guy that loves to run down the field and can make that play in the backfield. You have Kenny Moore, who has been known to make some sacks every now and again. He does make some good tackles. You now have TJ Carey, Rocky Sin, guys who are physical at the line of scrimmage. They love the physicality. It, it just makes sense that every single corner we have now has that tendency to want to come up and make big plays right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's a great thing. You can obviously see where Chris Ballard's trying to go with this. Uh, and as a depth piece for uh, the Cleveland Browns, 52 tackles. It's not too bad for a guy that you know only started in six games and played in all 16. I mean, basically probably a couple tackles per game as a depth piece, most likely. That's that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. And, you know, you mentioned the uh, run grade. It's really good. 
he doesn't seem to really have much of an injury problem. He's just a, a depth piece. Like we mentioned, Ballard is just, again, trying to fill that cornerback room up now. So that way we can invest more time in wide receiver when we go into the draft. So overall, I think this is a good signing. Again, you're getting getting them on a veteran minimum, uh, being 29 years old, has had that experience, and, and is now going to join Xavier Rhodes as the oldest guy, <laughs> tied for the uh, oldest guy out there in the locker room, uh, on the in the cornerback room, basically, which is going to be interesting to see how that works. But again, another quality depth piece that fits the scheme that Chris Ballard's trying to do in the defensive back room, which I, I like. I thought I thought this is a again another Chris Ballard move, uh, low risk and just a guy that you can get to add depth. Uh, we will, I will take it, and it's good to see that the Colts are still making moves. Yeah, a couple notes on here. You mentioned durability. He's a guy that's been incredibly durable, um, especially the last four seasons. He's only missed four games in his entire career. So he came into the league in 2014. And at corner, it, like I mentioned, you get banged up a lot. So he's a guy that's been incredibly durable. Yeah, Something that the Colts have not had basically right. the last few years, it seems like. There's yeah. been a lot of guys that have been injured. Um, we know the best of the best availability is, or the best ability is availability. I kind of ruined my own saying there, but um, yeah, he's a guy that certainly provides depth. Like you mentioned, uh, he's a seems like he's a willing tackler, which is huge for this Colts defense. Very durable, which is notable. One more thing that I think is makes this signing even better is he's a guy that that has experience playing the nickelback and also in the slot. We saw last year, he played 202 snaps last year in the slot. Um, and last year we saw when Kenny Moore was injured last year, the Colts had nobody to help him, like nobody to fill that role. I mean, they were absolutely terrible. We know Kenny Moore is one of the best slots in the game. And there's there was no guy behind him. So it's basically Kenny, it was Kenny Moore a bust. And when Kenny Moore was injured for those few games, the Colts were terrible in the slot. They absolutely were terrible. And so... This is another guy that you mentioned. He can play kind of all over the field. He has experience kind of in all different positions. Um, and I think the slot is huge here for this Colts defense. You just have a backup guy that you can rely on who has experience in the slot. Because that was another thing. The Colts really didn't have a ton of experience beyond Kenny Moore playing in the slot. And so really like this signing a lot. You mentioned he's 29 years old, one-year deal. You're not tied to him long-term. I'm assuming it's it's very cheap, vet minimum, I think it was. Uh, I like this move a lot. What grade, Derek, before we wrap this one up, would you give this TJ Carey signing? Yeah, I'm giving it I'm giving it a B. Um, again, it, it's just it, you can't get too excited over a, uh, a depth piece necessarily. But a B, B plus fits here. Uh, again, it's just another depth piece to add to that corner group because obviously the Colts are probably going to need it. And you bring in a experienced guy who's played in over 50 in 50 games of it in his career. He's had some experience uh, and knows the role that he's going to put most likely partake in and just fits the scheme in which Ballard's trying to do. And the deals great on a veterans minimum gives him a chance again to, if he's, you know, a good role uh, player for us, then, you know, that leaves for Ballard to want to bring him back. So again, a B, B plus for me seems right. I'm going to go B plus. I think B plus for me, what really takes it over the top from a B to a B plus for me is now you actually have a guy to, to play the slot outside of Kenny Moore. So if Kenny Moore gets banged up for a game or two next year, you have a guy that you're kind of confident can go in there and can be serviceable in the slot. So I like this move a lot. Um, I think it's a good move for Chris Ballard and company. And like you mentioned, uh, maybe it takes corner kind of – it was pretty high for me, after, especially after Pierre Desir got released. So, mm -hmm. you know, this move kind of maybe takes it down a little bit. I think you still maybe should address it. I just think maybe you should address it a little bit later. But yeah, overall, man, I'm a, I'm a fan of this move. I'm a fan of Chris Ballard. I'm always a fan of one-year prove-it kind of deals, Yeah, especially with guys who are proven in the league. and. That is something um, that the Colts, really amongst their defensive backs group, they don't have a lot of 
guys who are veterans back there. So Mm -hmm. love this move along with the Xavier Rhodes move, Uh, both one-year deals. You're not tied to these guys, but can provide some veteran leadership, can provide just some, yeah, just some mentorship for some of these young corners. So um, love this move. I think it's a good move, solid signing. Um, Yeah, so that kind of wraps up our thoughts here and our breakdown on the on the signing of tj carry by the colts here so yeah that wraps it up here guys thanks so much as always and as always go colts